The people here have been living in a certain way for hundreds of years. The Red Zhao people are very intelligent, savvy. Most of the women have maybe one year of school, so most of them can't read. Some of them have never held a pen before. Tatbin is made up mostly of Red Zhao people and some Black Hmong. And outside of the village center are these small communes or doys. It's a kind of a unique place because it's one of the few places that tourists can go and see Red Zhao people dressed in their traditional dress in such great numbers. The Red Zhao traditionally wear a red scarf. The younger girls are wearing like a small, almost like a bandana, red bandana, and the women are wearing this large, almost pillow-like hat on their head. Tafin is probably 80% Red Zhao. Tafin has very beautiful scenery, good weather, farming and everything. But the tourists come here not for not only for the landscapes, but also for the their culture, their traditional culture. We had to take the black one first, then we had to take yellow. After we had to take white color, then we had to take fine for working, making my clothes. Tourism, I think it's very important. It's very good to help the community, so the local people, they can, they can earn money from the tourists. So that's a very good thing. We can learn English languages from the tourists, so it helps a lot. First impressions of, of Tafin, it's not, not as polished. Uh, it's much different. It's much more raw. Our van was like bombarded the minute we came down the road and it was intimidating. It takes your breath away because there's just so many people and the, the, the chatter starts, uh, where are you from and how old are you? And... Uh, Canada. What's your name? Do you have brothers and sisters? How long are you here for? The tourists feel uncomfortable and then the tourists come less than less. There is definitely an issue with street sellers in half in. Um, in some cases there could be on a good day probably a hundred to 150 street sellers following tourists as they walk around the village. The street sellers follow the tourists. They're so friendly people so they just want to communicate with the tourists and then they try to sell to the tourists. So that's why the tourists feel uncomfortable. Five years ago there are a lot of tourists in Tafin much more than now at the moment. But we have to understand that this, that is the only way that they can earn money from the tourists. Because at the moment we don't have any place for the local people. We're hoping that with the number of community meetings that we've had and all the discussions that we've had with local government, with the women and men from Tap In, with private sector, with some of the small business owners, that we can come up with a plan that's, that's truly going to work. To have everyone together like that, making decisions, you know, in consultation and participation, is really excellent. For the ladies of the Red Zhao community to sit on an equal level with the mayor and the tourism ministers, it's a real big achievement for this project. And in the end, Mr. Hing, the vice chairman of the Sapa region, basically said, okay, I'm going to have my secretary write up the documents tonight. We're going to move forward. Well, we're trying to help the community become more self-sufficient when it comes to tourism. It's how to maximize the positive impacts, how to minimize the negative impacts, and ensure that they maintain their culture. The best case scenario is they can find a way to balance the traditional with the modern. I work or I study in the city. I still keep my culture, I keep my languages, everything. I don't want to change them. We should learn education, but keep the culture as well. That is very important. Some, some uh, breakthroughs happen in that village. 
over the past couple of days were making some signs, you know, all on their own with English. If these women, six years ago, they wouldn't even hold a pen because they were too shy. You can see the women now doing some collective marketing. I feel that very good. And I always ask him, say, we, I really like to have a market like that. The overall goal of the project is to improve quality of life. It's hard work embroidering. Không có like điện that. thoại đâu. Mình oh. nghèo quá, không có điện thoại. Uh, she said that you cannot embroider, no. but you can write. Uh -huh. But they can uh, embroider, but they cannot write. They cannot mm -hmm. write, yes. Well, maybe you can teach me a little about embroidering and I can teach you a little bit about writing. They really open their hearts to us when we come in and work on these projects. So they welcome us into their homes. They don't want to take our money for anything. They give us gifts. They're just so happy to have us here delivering some training. So my, my family we had to work it together. They had to talk to people. We had to make their home stay and they help my family. I think that my family, they will have to be better now. Very good for my family and very good for myself.